Yo, the name is Alpern, and yeah, Relic just dropped a huge bomb in the form of a balance patch for Company of Heroes 3, which we will be taking a look at. Uh, now, I, I did just skim through these, so I'm not 100% on everything, but there do seem to be quite some quite insane changes in here, but also a lot of very good changes, which I'm sure all of us can appreciate that are long due. Uh, so beginning here, taking a look at the multiplayer changes, of course, there is some uh, smaller single player changes, but I'm not too invested in that, so we're just going to skip it. Uh, they do have some changes here lined up for, uh, for mortars, which I think is mostly aimed towards team games, where there's been a lot of emplacement, so you now have uh, increased damage towards emplacement. I've heard specifically the Ver Bunker, for instance, seems to be impossible to kill with mortars, hopefully this has changed here. Uh, we also have a machine gun change, which again, I think is aimed toward team games where there is a lot of blobs running around. And yeah, hopefully this change makes it so that machine guns can actually uh, AOE suppress uh, the, the blobs, uh, making them more useful. So yeah, uh, good changes overall here, nothing too major. Uh, we do also have some smaller cost changes here for the US. I will have to update all my tech trees after this. That's going to be quite some work because there is a lot of changes. Uh, but yeah, moving on to the US, we see a lot of buffs here. Now, the US has been struggling quite a bit, especially if you look at the win rates. So I do think most of these are warranted. For instance, here you can see the Bazooka team uh, buff, which I think is really good. Uh, the Bazookas that we've mostly seen a lot of is the Paratroopers and the SSF squads. So I do think this is a very healthy change, uh, as this unit has been uh, borderline useless or borderline very poor. Uh, in terms of its effectiveness. So good change right here, I think. Um, we also have some uh, other changes like this one, which I'm not entirely sure of what their goal is. I think the sniper has already been quite strong. So seeing the aim time decreased, you know, making it fire even faster. Not entirely sure. I don't know how, if, like, how impactful this really is. Uh, but I do think time will tell. Uh, we also have a... Uh, a nerf here for the Greyhound, which I'm not entirely sure of either. I, I think the Greyhound, while quite good, I think it is quite outshined by the M3 right now. And if you look at these changes here, you will note that there is no M3 quad changes, uh, but only for the 75mm gun carriage. And I'm... I'm... I'm not sure why this is, um, this feels a bit outdated to be honest, but they do mention at the top here uh, that some of these changes were planned uh, for a long time. Uh, so maybe maybe they just haven't gotten around to those changes yet, uh, but I do think the quad is definitely overperforming right now. It seems to be killing all of Axis light vehicles while simultaneously completely re instantly removing all the planes from, from the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, a bit odd change here, uh, seeing no quad changes. Uh, we also see some major buff here, I would call it, to the Hellcat, getting a huge reload time decrease here. Uh, so yeah, Hellcat, huge buff, probably more for team games, but I wouldn't say so either. Uh, like, this perhaps makes, uh, uh, makes infantry support center builds a bit more viable, because usually right now you see a lot of mechanized uh, simply because of how good the Sherman is, but with the Hellcat being better, maybe you can afford going infantry support center and then use the Hellcat as anti-tank. So yeah, cool change in general. Uh, we see some uh, nerfs here to the Weasel, uh, nothing too major. You see a lot of changes here for the Whizbang. Now reading these changes, I see that there is no range change, and I think that's the biggest issue with the Whizbang. It has a really shitty range, at least compared to every other artillery piece in the game. So yeah, I don't think this is enough, but that's just my gut feeling. Uh, moving on to the battle groups, uh, we can see here that the paratrooper, uh, the paratroopers bazooka cost is decreased. Uh, again, we've seen a lot of souks, uh, probably see a lot more souks, uh, but again, you can see here in the airborne battle group, we have no changes for the pathfinders, which has been e extremely popular right now. Uh, simply because you can skip your riflemen, you can skip your bars, you can skip the grenade tech and just go straight into um, into uh, Pathfinders and then straight go for the Sherman right with mechanized so you get a very fast Sherman. Uh, so yeah, a bit odd change here, not seeing any Pathfinder changes, but uh, hopefully that will come if they remain a very big issue where they completely outface riflemen, right? We shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. But yeah, we're moving on to the Special Operations Battle Group. 
uh, we do see some uh, some buffs here to some of the abilities, uh, which is very nice. Also notably a big nerf here to this uh, this uh, airdrop. This is the airdrop that gives you a machine gun, an 80 gun and 40 fuel, which is batshit insane for 120 munitions. So I think this is a very good nerf. That, that airdrop was just simply too cost effective, right? Uh, so yeah, good change right there. Uh, that's it for the US, so again, no quad change, no USF uh, mechanized support center Sherman 76mm change, uh, and no Pathfinder change, which I think is arguably uh, the most over uh, overperforming rather uh, units of the US um, forces right now. Um, but again, you know, a lot of a lot of changes across the board, both buffs and nerfs. Uh, hopefully, it remains that way. Moving on to the British forces, we have the infantry section, which is quite a controversial unit, I would say. You can see here there's a lot of nerfs here uh, for the boys' AT rifle, right, which has been so strong. Uh, I do wonder, looking at this, if this is enough. Uh, I simply don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but the fact that they, for instance, had AOE damage versus infantry is, uh, is quite insane, right? Um, but yeah, hopefully this is enough. Remains to be seen. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, moving on, we have some uh, slight changes here to the foot guards. Overall a buff, even though they get one manpower more expensive. Uh, but yeah, the submachine gun lethality is increased, making this unit a bit better versus infantry, right? Uh, you can also see some changes here to the commandos. Nothing too major, again, so we're mostly just going to be skipping through these. Um, we also have some changes here to the Gurkhas, which become even stronger, both their brand upgrade as well as their Thompson. Nice to see, again, I think a lot of the, the UK uh, special or elite infantry has been very outfaced by the infantry section, right? And I, that's why I think, I don't think these changes are enough to the infantry section. I think the infantry section remains a problem, but we, time will tell again, time will tell again. This is only one of many patches to come for sure. And then we have the Polton, which get a huge buff, I would say, just looking at this. You have range increase, you have cheaper gun, you have uh, you have uh, decreased cost to get the, the, the truck itself, and you have speedier boost. Like, sure, the, the damage is reduced, but this is seemingly only the anti-air. It's hard to tell, it's gonna have to be tested, we don't really know. Um, but yeah, this looks quite big buffs for the, the Polston. Uh, little truck, um, which is cool. I think right now we rarely see any light vehicle play for the Brits, and as you'll see once we get later down here in the in the notes, you'll see a lot of buffs for the British light vehicles. So yeah, moving on to the Humber, you can see again just a ton of buffs here, uh, which is really cool. Uh, for instance, like this one, for instance, I think is a bit hard or a bit vague. It's hard to say what it really what it really does, but. It's definitely a buff, but significantly, what that means is hard to tell, right? It's hard to decipher. Uh, moving on to the steward, we see a huge cost reduction here on the requisition, which I think is really good. It was pretty, it was very much too expensive, right? And then again, same here for actually constructing the unit, which is cool. And you also see some buffs here to the vehicle itself. And, you know, like, look at these these buffs here. Cannon penetration from 65 to 120 at close range, from 40 to 80 at long range. Like, this is pretty much a 2x buff, right, across the board, which is just quite insane. So, yeah, moving on, we have some slight changes to the bishop here. These don't interest me too much, but I think it's worth pointing out here that the, the barrage recharge time is, is halved. Which I think in team games could be quite insane if you have multiple British players, multiple Bishop players. You can kind of slam those forward uh, ambulance positions quite hard, right? And moving on, we have a buff to the Matilda, uh, as well as a uh, as well as a buff here to the Grant. I think if I read this correctly, yes. So that's the steady assault. That's the Vet One ability, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it, it has a reduced penalty to its movement. Uh, of course, this ability, I believe, increases the, the gun um, rate of fire as well as accuracy. But yeah, we're moving on, we have the AA Crusader. This is not the Crusader of the Tech Tree. This is the Crusader from the battle group that is a call-in, uh, which has an anti-air gun, and this is significantly nerfed here. We saw a lot of Crusaders being called in without actually teching. So again, I think nerfs to call-ins in general is quite nice. 
which is why some of the later cha changes you will see further down the tree specifically for Dak is insane to me but we'll, we'll, we'll get there moving on we have the the Churchill here who uh, Black Prince is getting a lot of buffs here I think in general sure there is a range nerf here but look at that damage buff for instance you know really amplifying how it's supposed to be strong versus tanks so yeah really cool I think this is going to be like the, the British main heavy tank in the in the team games uh, we'll see if it's enough to 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 push it into 1v1s I still think it may be hitting a tiny bit too late but we're, we're gonna have to wait and see time will definitely tell moving on to Ver, we have the uh, a lot of changes here again you can see here for instance the the Panzer company manpower cost this is the tier 4 structure uh, it's getting quite a bit of an increase in terms of manpower cost we've seen a lot of Panzer 4 rushes so hopefully that this does change that and moving on we have the concrete bunker nerf here uh, where it gets some armor reduction as well as some health reduction uh, again this has been such a huge team game issue so i mean 35 armor still sounds quite a bit especially if the mortars don't have uh, any chance to penetrate i i don't know here this is again how going to have to be tested right uh, and yeah here's a huge change communication cables for the cutting crowd from 25 munitions to 35s. So what this means is you can't instantly upgrade the cutting crowd. You have to wait. Now, what this actually means in terms of gameplay, I don't know yet. Do you have to like, do you simply not capture your safe points until you have 35 munitions? But then again, how do you get 35 munitions without capturing those safe points? I, I don't really know. Anyway, I think this is a healthy change. The cutting cred was definitely overperforming. And again, especially looking at team games, which I think is where most of these changes are focused. Moving on to the Nebelwerfer, we have uh, buffs across the board again for most artillery pieces, it seems. Uh, so I guess that's very nice uh, to start bombarding those forward uh, ambulance positions. Moving on to the Verbal Wind, we have a lot of uh, nerfs here it seems. I think this is mostly due to the call-in, not necessarily the one you, you tech for, uh, but definitely aimed at the call-in one. Um, but again, we're gonna have to wait and see. Some of these numbers are really hard to decipher. Uh, then we have another nerf here to the Panzer IV timing, which has been hitting extremely fast. You can also see a pop uh, population cost increase. I'm not entirely sure how effectful that's going to be. I, I think in general in Call of 3, you seem to be having a lot of room with your pop cap. So interesting change. We're going to have to see how this impacts. But this together with the, the, the nerf to the Panzer company is definitely going to delay those fast Panzer IVs quite a bit, I think. And then again, the the culprit, the big the big villain here, right? For the the Ver battle groups, the Luftwaffe battle group gets a lot of changes. Starting off with the small PP emplacement here, gets its uh, its fuel cost uh, increased, which means you can't build it from the from the get go. You know, you drop down your Luftwaffe pioneers and then instantly start constructing it. That's not going to be possible anymore, uh, especially since it also requires one of the companies, right? So you either have to get uh, tier tier 2, tier 3 or tier 4, uh, tier 1 doesn't count, so you have to tech before you can actually construct this thing, which I think is a very good change. Moving on, we have the, the FLAC 88, which is, of course, you know, it's, it's just some minor changes here. I don't know if this is too massive, we're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, definitely interesting changes here. Uh, I've been skimming through these and I couldn't find any changes to the, the recruit bug where the gun gets full HP after it gets recruited and remains at full HP after getting decrewed. Uh, so I can't see anything of that. Might have been ninja patched or it's still in there. I, I really don't know. Anyway, I do hope that these changes will, will make sure that the emplacements aren't too spammy and don't show up too early deciding games from the get-go. Uh, you can see here the Luftwaffe combat group, this is the Verbal Wind, uh, so it does get a timing nerf here as it gets to 4 command points, uh, which I think is, is very good. Now moving on to the DAC, which honestly, after reading these changes, should maybe just be called Little Italy. Uh, it seems, you know, when, when Relic uh, revealed the factions, everyone complained about there not being any Italy. I feel like this these patch notes are aimed at that, because it feels like... 
it just turns back into little Italy, to be honest. But uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. So yeah, some smaller uh, cost changes here to the teching structures. Again, I'm gonna have to update all my tech trees here. Not entirely sure how this is going to uh, affect your teching paths or the unit timings yet. Uh, we're simply gonna have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, some uh, some buffs here to the, the Tigran. Uh, but yeah, there is a lot of nerfs here in store for uh, for DAC in general, I would say, with most of their opening units as well as their tier 1 units. Uh, except for Assault Grenadiers for some reason, I guess Relic looked at their data and saw that the Assault Grenadiers were underutilized, so that's why I guess this was buffed. Honestly, I can't tell, uh, but I think this is probably one of the more major nerfs right here on the Panzer Jäger squad, which has been by far the most popular uh, call-in from the deployments, right? Uh, most people seem to opt for the Panzer Jäger squad, simply because it's so cost-effective to have a soft anti-tank infantry that also can deal with infantry, right? Um, so yeah, I think this is a good change overall, makes the other options a lot more attractive, uh, perhaps even the Assault Grenadiers here. But yeah, uh, a lot of other nerfs, uh, for instance for the, the Kradschitz in here, the build time increased. This mostly means it's going to take longer to get um, that as a capping squad, which is in turn going to delay your opening resources, so you probably can't tech tier 1 as fast. Uh, that's what I'm getting at. You can also see here a lot of nerfs for the 250 half track. Um, I didn't know this was overperforming, but they probably had some data to back this up. Uh, people who are probably struggling with the, the early 250 light carriers, even though personally I don't think it was that strong. They seem to lose uh, most engagements versus infantry as long as the infantry was in cover, which I'm personally fine with. I think it's way more troublesome when you put squads such as a flamethrower pioneer uh, or even the guastatori inside of these. I think that's when they become an issue and not when they're they're firing on their own. Um, but yeah, interesting change right there. Uh, yeah, some uh, some smaller nerfs here to the recovery half pack and the flak railing. Um, again, I don't think these are too bad, and I don't think they are even remotely as bad as the M3 quad for the US. But again, looking at the win rates, I can sort of see where they're coming from, where they want to nerf these units. I really don't think DAX power comes from these units, though. I think majority of DAX power lies in the fact that the armory upgrades are so strong across the board and they're really cost effective, right? You get HP, you get a, a ton of utility from those and I think they really need to slam some fuel costs uh, on top of the armory upgrades. Um, but again, uh, very hard to decipher. I think this nerf right here has been long overdue, for instance, with the Guastatori. Uh, this unit seems to have been uh, completely whack in the team games where it's basically just been able to steamroll entire factions uh, so yeah about time to see this nerf but again from a 1v1 perspective i barely see this unit so i guess i'll see even less of it but yeah here we have some of the more insane changes in my opinion and i honestly couldn't believe i spat out my coffee when i read this uh, because it's just it's such a weird direction they're, they're taking this in. Uh, but yeah, let's begin here with the Italian Combined Arms Battlegroup changes, uh, which are extremely massive. Um, and again, I don't understand them, but uh, let's talk about them. We have here first the Bersaglieri Bolster. Uh, so this is the, the first um, upgrade on the left-hand tree of the Italian Combined Arms Battlegroup after Bersaglieri, where you buff the Bersaglieri by another model. Uh, this gets one uh, command point cheaper, uh, which on its own isn't that huge, uh, but in general this just buffs Bersaglieris because uh, the, the overall timing for the Bredas are going to be the same, but you can get the bolster faster, right? So you basically move one CP from the, the bolster down to the machine guns. Uh, so again, this is just a very small uh, buff to the Bersaglieri. Uh, but that's not really the major point here, but it is the Caro Armato and Pact of Steel changes, which you can read here down below. Now, this is going to be an anecdotal example, uh, but I've played a lot of Company of Heroes 3 the past week, and I would say maybe 80% of my games, both with and versus deck, has been Caro Armata spam, and that's not because it's a funny unit, though it is a very funny unit, it is also extremely powerful, especially with the, the DAC armory. And to get them an entire CP earlier 
is honestly just insane because it was quite early, uh, quite early to begin with. If you rush them and you don't go for the Berserkleri upgrades, uh, so yeah, I, I honestly don't know what this is. Uh, and honestly, when I read this from my glance, I, I, I literally just can't believe it. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, for me, this is just obvious. They were already too strong, and now they make them even stronger in terms of timing. And looking again, look at this change from 3 to 1 for Pact of Steel that makes this unit even cheaper. And yeah, I'm going to put my whole reputation at stake here and say if this isn't completely broken and will be spammed to no end, then I'm just not a good Company of Heroes player. Because to me, looking at this from a, a glance, this seems batshit insane. And I don't see why you would ever pick another battle group with DAC as long as these these power spikes are at these timings. Uh, so yeah, enjoy spamming Karur Matas because I can't see how this doesn't get nerfed in the very next balance patch. Um, again, I, I don't really know why this is the case, but this is the case. And uh, yeah, I think we've we've solved the meta after reading the, the patch notes. <laughs> but yeah, hilarious changes all around. Um, some very good ones, some, I mean, some less good ones, let's be real. It's going to be quite a bit fun spamming this though, but I, I don't want to be on the receiving end. Again, I don't really know how the other factions are going to cope with this, like US for instance, with, like, are Sooks good enough? Can Sooks pull away two or three Karo Armatas at the 8 minutes timing? I don't think so. Um, but yeah, we're simply gonna have to wait and see. And we also have some minor bug fixes here, such as the British Rifle uh, Nade now gets a minimum range, so you can't shotgun it anymore. I think it's worth pointing out here that again, Pathfinders are unchanged, and Pathfinders also has the Rifle Nades, so I guess the Pathfinder Rifle Nade shotgun remains. Uh, which, you know, you could argue what you think about that, but yeah, some, some minor oversights here from Relic. Again, I think the... The, some of the more troublesome units weren't affected at all, and I think with with DAC here, most of the DAC openings before this patch has been uh, has been the the pioneer units, right? And the, those aren't really affected, so you you're going to keep spamming those pioneers until you you basically just start spamming the the Karo Armatas here together with the Pact of Steel. Uh, and yeah, I think this is a good patch in general, as it affects most of the, the very stupid stuff that's going on right now, such as Ver Luftwaffe. Uh, but some of the things that aren't mentioned here, such as the Loiters, right? The, the Ver uh, Luftwaffe Loiter, again, super powerful. The British Luftwaffe Loiter, again, super powerful. Uh, yeah, Pathfinders and the M3 Quad. And yeah, the Karar Marta gets a buff, which... I, I certainly didn't see coming, but yeah, very cool changes, and uh, I think uh, we can now safe to say that uh, we finally have the Italian faction in uh, in uh, in Company of Heroes three. This is now Italy. Italy unit changes. Very cool. Thank you for watching. What the